Okay. Okay, Rich, go ahead and start talking. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight on the second WEA Telephone Town Hall regarding Initiative 1351. We're going to go ahead and get started here in just a minute. Again, this is Rich Wood. I work at the WEA. I'll be moderating the call tonight. You're joining us for the second Telephone Town Hall regarding Initiative 1351 to reduce class sizes here in Washington State. So thank you. Thank you, WEA members, for joining us on this call tonight. We should be done by 8 o'clock. Um, please press zero at any time to ask a question about Initiative 1351 and the effort to reduce class sizes here in Washington. So thank you for being on the call tonight. We have WEA President Kim Mead with us. And also we have Yes on 1351 Campaign Manager Mary Howes. And Kim and Mary will talk about the campaign to reduce our K-12 class sizes in Washington and take your questions live. So again, if you have a question about Initiative 1351 or the election, please press zero at any time and one of our screeners will talk to you. So our ballots must be uh, dropped in the mail or postmarked by Tuesday night at 8 o'clock or dropped in a ballot box in your community on Tuesday or before Tuesday. And so we just have a few days left before the election and we wanted to make sure that you as WA members had a chance to have any of your questions answered regarding Initiative 1351. So again, to ask a question, please press zero on your telephone keypad and you'll be connected directly with one of our volunteer operators. So again, please press zero to ask a question. And now we'll go ahead and hear from WA President Kim Mead. Kim? I want to thank everyone. I'm so proud of the work that the WA members have done to get us to this point. We've gathered signatures in the spring, we've made tens of thousands of calls to voters, and we're fast approaching victory. We really need to make sure that all our members are working together to make sure our students are going to get what they need in smaller class sizes, and I'm going to be encouraging you to join thousands of other WA members and vote yes on 1351. You know, opponents offer nothing but more excuses for not reducing class sizes, and it's time to finally do something. Our state ranks 47th out of 50 for class sizes, and that is simply unacceptable. We can change that with a yes vote. It's time to make sure all of our students receive the individual attention they need to succeed and learn. This is a big opportunity to do something great for our students. Thank you again. Well, thanks, Kim. And now we'll hear a few words from WEA um, Campaign Manager for Initiative 1351, Mary Howes. Mary? Hi, I'm Mary Howes. I'm a former Washington teacher. I have four sons in Washington Public Schools, and right now I'm the campaign manager for Initiative 1351. Um, I just wanted to thank WA members for your ongoing support. You have really made a difference. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about how we're rounding out the last few days of the campaign to pass Initiative 1351. We're running great TV ads in Seattle, Spokane, Vancouver, and Yakima. We've been sending a lot of mail pieces out to Vancouver, Yakima, and Spokane. We've been running online ads. And we've also teamed up on the get out the vote efforts with other campaigns. Uh, thousands of teachers, education support professionals, parents, principals, superintendents, community leaders, and others support Initiative 1351. And the latest polling shows 1351 with a solid lead. In the final days, we just need to make sure that everybody gets out and votes yes on 1351. Great. Well, thank you, Mary. And remember, if you're on the line, thank you for joining us on the WA Telephone Town Hall about Initiative 1351 and the efforts to reduce class sizes here in Washington. And if you have a question at any time, you can press zero. And I have a question for all of you. We have less than a week to go until the ballots are due on November 4th, which is Tuesday. And if you have already voted and returned your ballot, please press 1 on your telephone. If you have voted and voted yes on Initiative 1351, press 2. And if you have not yet voted, please press 3. So again, if you've voted and returned your ballot, press 1. If you have voted and, returned and voted yes on Initiative 1351, press 2. And if you have not yet voted, please press 3. And thank you. I see the votes are coming in. Keep, keep going. Keep them going. If you've uh, voted 
already and return your ballot, press 1. And if you have voted yes on 1351, please press 2. And if you haven't voted yet, please press 3. And now we'll go ahead and we will go to Leo in Afreda, who has a question. Leo, are you are you there? Leo, you have oh, a question yes. about Alistair McCleary? No, I will, kind of, but you know, the thing is, I'm retired, and I taught for many years, and they've been making these excuses for a long time, so I'm wondering, okay, what do you say to the people who say we can't afford it, or we got to wait, or whatever else? That's a great question, and I think we'll have Mary Howes, the 1351 campaign manager, answer that question. I think that's one she's heard from a lot of folks. Mary? Yeah, you know, thank you. I couldn't agree more. I think that um, we keep hearing excuses, and um, it's really time to do something about this. I mean, as you know, we're 47th in the nation in class size, and we have students right now in classrooms today that really need this issue addressed. So um, I'm so proud to be part of 1351 because it will lower class sizes for all Washington students. And I think it just sends a powerful message that it's time to stop the excuses and do what's right for kids. Great. Thanks, Mary. Hey, uh, we're going to stop that first poll question. It looks like the majority of folks who are on the line have not yet returned your ballots. Uh, so you're like a lot of folks in Washington State. We know about 20% of uh, Washington voters have returned their ballots so far. So um, hopefully at the end of this call, you'll be able to fill out your ballot and vote yes in 1351 and get it in before uh, Tuesday. Right now, we're going to go to um, Charles who has a question. Cheryl, are you there? I am here. And you have a question about capacity. And, and uh, what school district do you work in? I'm in the Squim School District. And we are beyond our capacity. In the high school, there are teachers, uh, multiple, like four or five teachers, who every period they are going from one classroom to another because they don't have a classroom. In my building, there is no extra space. There is okay. not. Well, that's a not, and so if you say we're going to reduce the class size already next year, there are going to be four classrooms in portables which are all right well we'll go ahead and let mary answer that question that's one that she's heard a lot on the campaign trail so uh do you uh, want to answer that mary please yeah um you bring up a really good point um but there's a couple things to bear in mind first of all this is a, a statewide initiative so one of the things that we had to think about when we were writing this initiative is to try to make it um, apply to the whole state. So there are uh, districts and there are schools that have empty classrooms but simply lack the funding to hire more teachers and reduce class sizes. But there are also places like SWIM um, that don't have the capacity right now. So um, what this initiative does is that if you don't have the capacity, your district would still get the money to hire staff that work work in the building and work with directly with kids. And I you know, absolutely hear what you're saying, that this is, um, you know, that doesn't instantly reduce class sizes, but what we're trying to do is to make sure that we um, get the attention that kids need right away, that we get uh, more adult help, and then we address the capacity issue. So um, we will have to we will have to deal with that issue, and, but we also want to have that flexibility so that schools still get help and students still get help. You know, one of the things that you know I wish we could do is I wish we could have um, empty classrooms and empty buildings in every school and then pass this initiative. But I don't think it's going to work that way. I think what we have to do is first show parents and community members that we have the staff to lower class sizes, and then work with them to address the building issue. And uh, next, we have a question from Chris Incarnation, who has a question about funding. Uh, Chris, could you go ahead and ask your question? You're up there in Incarnation, huh? Yes, I am. Um, basically, yeah, I, I like the initiative. I like you know, lowering class sizes and all that. I know the benefits of it. I'm actually 
And yeah, you know, it benefits me because I am actually in training to be a teacher right now. I'm going to school for it. And the more opportunities you are, the more opportunities that I that I have. But I'm concerned about the funding for this. I mean, there's been nothing mentioned about how this is going to be funded. I, you know, as a taxpayer, I have questions. Okay, well, thank you. And actually, several people in the line, um, in the queue, have similar questions. Jennifer from Bainbridge has a similar question. Um, Brad does. Uh, Mariana. So uh, we'll go ahead and let Mary Howes, the 1351 campaign manager, uh, answer that question. She's been uh, talking to a lot of reporters in different parts of the state about that. So Mary, go ahead. Yeah, it's a it's a good question. Uh, this initiative actually directs the state to fund this. So one of the things I want to make sure everybody understands is that there is, if this passes, it is not as if it would pass, there's no funding, and then schools have to figure out how to fund it. It directs the state to fund this. So it's important to know that. The other thing is that the state already has to fully fund education by 2018. Um, all this initiative really does is it takes the state's own recommendations for lowering class size and staffing our schools and makes sure that when they fully fund our schools, they address and implement these class uh, size ratios. So um, the funding comes from the state. The state has to do it anyway. This initiative simply um, ensures that it addresses class size. And we'll go ahead and take a question from, uh, let's see, Desi. Um, Desi, are you on the line? You have a question about um, the COLA? I am here. Hi, Mary. Hi, Desi. Desi. Hi. <laughs> um, so the one, something I wanted to ask you to talk about tonight, because I have so many teacher friends coming up to me, especially after the ad aired, saying, oh, my gosh, people are coming up to me, and they're asking me about how this is going to impact our COLA, and they're coming up to me saying, well, if I approve this, you guys might not get a COLA. Um, and concerns about how approving 1351 is going to ha impact other parts of education. So I was hoping that maybe you could clarify that a little bit and talk about that just a little bit. Thanks, and, and we need to clarify that Desi is a uh, 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 science teacher from the North Thurston School District, and she's actually in one of the 1351 television ads. Um, yeah. So if you've seen the ad that features a, a teacher in a science classroom, that's a Desi. And thank you for doing that. I think this is yeah, a good question for um, Kim Mead, the WA president, to answer. Kim? And I can always invite Mary to go ahead and step in as well. But that, you're right. That is a question that we've heard more than once. And, the, and the, the bottom line is the COLA hasn't been taken off, and it's not, it's not gone. It's going to be there again. And, in fact, we're going to start to see it right away when we look at budgets. In RRA that we just had in 2014, the delegates that were there took a look at not just the class size, but also at the full piece of compensation, which includes COLA, of course. But we're taking a look at salary, pension, and, of course, uh, our health care. So all of those issues are going to be taken a look at during this legislative session. Uh, great. Thank you, Kim. Um, Mary, is there anything you'd add to that? Yeah, I guess back to the full funding and the Supreme Court decision, I just want to make sure everybody understands that that, that, that decision is about fully funding our schools, amply funding our schools. So um, full funding means all kinds of things, and I think, you know, there's no doubt that full funding means lowering class sizes, addressing COLAs, there's all kinds of pieces to this. So um, please don't, um, don't think for a moment that uh, these things need to be at odds with each other. Everything must be funded for education by 2018. Right. Thank you, Mary. Now we'll ask another poll question of all of you folks, all you WA members who are on the line uh, listening in. Um, I have a question. If you have not yet voted, do you have a plan to vote? And uh, please press 1 if you don't have a plan to vote, and press 2 if you do have a plan to vote. So again, if you have not yet voted, um, if you have a plan to vote, press 1, and if you do not have a plan to vote, if you do not have a plan to vote, press 1. If you do have a plan to vote, press 2, please. And a plan to vote, you know, when you do vote, you should fill out your ballot with a black pen and place it in the security envelope and insert that into the return envelope, sign it, and then drop it into a ballot drop box or put a stamp on it and mail it no later than Tuesday, November 4th. Um, it looks like a lot of you... Um, Almost 90% of you right now do have a plan for how you're um, going to fill out your ballot and return it. So, again, what we really recommend is that you put that plan together 
You fill out your ballot with a black pen, vote yes on 1351, put it in the security envelope, insert that into the return envelope, sign it and drop it in the ballot drop box or put a stamp on it and mail it no later than Tuesday. And you can go to the uh, ourvoicewashingtonea.org uh, website to find a personalized voter's guide that includes a map of places where you can drop your ballot off. And I know that's what I did and that was very convenient. Um, so now we'll go ahead and take another question. I think we'll go to um, Mary in Renton. Um, Mary in Renton, um, you have a, a question about um, which staff this would um, fund. Can you go ahead and ask your question? Um, th my question was that I was concerned that the League of Education Voters are opposing 1351. So I started reading up on it, and one fact that concerned me is the fact said that 71% of the new staff hired under 1351 would not be classroom teachers, and that also if the d districts were not a low-income or Title I um, school, they could also get a waiver pass to decide how they want to spend the money. So now I'm thinking maybe I don't want to vote yes for this. Well, Mary, thank you for asking that question. Um, there, there has been some misinformation out there from some of the opponents who really don't have a solution for reducing class sizes, but just, I think, want to confuse things. And Mary Howes, the campaign manager, can you address uh, Mary's uh, question from Renton? Yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that you brought those things up because they are absolutely not true. So first of all, um, this initiative would hire about 15,000 teachers over the next four years. So that 71% that is misleading. What um, The people are calculating that by subtracting out all kindergarten through third grade teachers because they argue that the state's going to lower class sizes already for those grades. And, I hope they do, but they haven't done it yet. So they subtract that out. And they're also subtracting out um, educators and teachers that work directly with kids, teacher librarians, school counselors, um, and so forth. So it really is a misleading number. And this initiative does cover beyond teaching positions. It does provide for more nurses, psychologists, educational assistants, and so forth, which we um, think is, is critical to student success and, and um, are, are happy that those positions are included. But it really is focused on class size, 15,000 more teachers. And there is no waiver. Um, that's very misleading. These, uh, the, the, num the staffing must be used to lower class size. Um, that's not, uh, there's no waiver you can get. The only provision that um, maybe they're kind of uh, alluding to is if there truly is no capacity to lower class size. Again, they can use this to hire staff that work in the schools with students. So not someone working in the district office as a, you know, doing paperwork, it has to be somebody in the school. So that could look like instead of having a kindergarten classroom with 30 students, maybe we have a kindergarten classroom uh, and, and one teacher, we have a kindergarten classroom with 30 students and two teachers. Or it could be used to hire someone to provide um, small group instruction and pull out math groups or things like that. But that's only if they don't have the classroom space. So there's absolutely no waiver. This money needs to go directly to staff to work in schools with kids. So Mary from Renton, does that answer your question? Um, yes, that does. Okay, thank you. And there were other folks as well on the line who had a, a similar question, like uh, Jeff or Jeffrey had a question similar to that. And, uh, you know, we'll go ahead. There's a, a couple people, again, who maybe have joined us later asking questions about um, where will the funding come from. So Leah, do you, you have a question? Um, from Lummi Island up by Bellingham. Do you have a question about the funding? Yes, I sure do. Hi, my name is Leah, and I appreciate this. I, I know that it is a mandate that um, the state cover education costs. And my question is, and my concern, um, and I'm a supporter of this and I voted yes, and so did my spouse who is a public school teacher, but um, having grandchildren and looking at the future, where is the funding coming from? And I know that the state has to pay for it, but what programs are potentially on the block that may be cut in order to cover the funding for this mandate? Right. Thank you, Leah. I think we'll have Mary Howes, the campaign manager, uh, address that one. Yeah, and thank you for voting yes. We appreciate that, but thank you also for your question. Um, 
A couple of things. First of all, uh, this is phased in over four years and two budget cycles. So there is time to address um, how to fund this. And hopefully, and I, this is what we want, is for them to address it in a way that doesn't cut other things, especially um, social services. You know, I worked uh, in a high poverty school where I care deeply about lowering class sizes, but I also know how much those families and those students rely on those social services. So I, I think that um, it's, it's, we don't have an exact answer of how the legislature will address this, but they have time, and we are committed to sticking with this and make sure, making sure that it's implemented in a way that really doesn't harm kids and families, because that's what we're trying to do is improve things for kids and the cycle of poverty, poverty and give kids really what they need to succeed in not only schools, but in life. So, um, I, you know, the, this, these are tough questions, but it's something I think there's time to address. The other thing you should know is that, you know, right now the state has um, $1.8 billion in reserves. The economy is improving. So I don't, I don't like to accept this uh, notion that the only way we can fund schools is to cut schools or cut other programs. I think there's, there's hope that we can address this. All right. Thanks, Mary. You know, um, we had a similar measure on the ballot about 14 years ago, Initiative 728. A lot of the people who are on the line probably remember that. And um, we have Deborah on the line who has a question about that. Uh, Deborah, you have a question? Yes, I'm a retired school psychologist. And 14 years ago, we had this along with the COLA, the two initiatives, and Governor Locke um, repealed them. Thousands of us went to Olympia, and thousands more went to Spokane to try to stop that and it didn't work. We lost it. And I want to know what's to stop that from happening again. Good question, Deborah. We'll go ahead and let Mary um, take a crack at it and then um, we'll see if Kim Mead, the WA president, would like to uh, uh, look ahead to the upcoming legislative session. All right. So um, you mentioned the two initiatives. So one of them, uh, 732, the COLA initiative, just for what it's worth, is actually still law, and it still is supposed to be implemented, and every, um, every time they don't, they have to vote not to implement it. But that's, a, that's, you know, so just so you know, that's still around. 728, though, was another class size initiative. Um, it did go into effect, and then after, um, uh, after a few years, the legislature overturned it. So I hear that concern a lot, like why should we why should we do this if they can overturn it? And a couple of things. One is things haven't gotten any better for our students. We're still um, 47th in the nation, and this is still a problem, and it's still the right thing to do for kids. But what I think makes this timing right is that behind this we have the McCleary decision, the Supreme Court decision that's obligating the state to fully fund schools. So they go hand in hand. I think it would be more difficult for the legislature to repeal this when they're obligated to fully fund schools. So to have them cut when they're supposed to fully fund is a little more difficult. The other piece is that um, this uh, initiative does include these uh, recommendations into basic education, which again, the state is obligated to fund. So we think there's a combination of factors that make this more likely to be successful. Um, but I agree that we are going to definitely, first of all, have to pass it, and then we're going to have to make sure it's really implemented and that we continue to advocate for this issue because you're, you're right, it hasn't gotten any better. We just let this go on for too long. And thank you, Mary. How about from your perspective, Kim, as president of the WEA, um, if this passes, looking ahead, what role do WEA members play in working with the legislature to make sure that 1351 is funded, but also all the other things that our kids need? I think that's a, a, a great point that we know when we start up in the legislative session that all of our members need to be involved. I think that's so important for all of our elected officials to be able to hear directly from those that are in the schools to understand how it's affecting us. You know, it'll take a two-thirds majority to be able to uh, um, actually take this away and making sure that our voices are right there in front of them makes it less likely that they would um, take it away from us. And the bottom line is, I don't think anybody would proudly say, yes, I'd like to take us back to being 47th in the nation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kim. I'd like to remind everybody we have just a couple minutes left. If you haven't asked a question, you can dial zero on your phone and talk to one of our screeners. 
and uh, would be happy to entertain additional questions that we haven't already um, heard. Um, in the meantime, Mary, how is it looking out there in terms of voter support? It seems when I read the newspaper stories and when I listen to the radio, it sounds like there's quite a bit of support out there for Initiative 1351. Yeah, there is a lot of a lot of support. The the polling has been strong and shows that you know we're likely to be successful with this. And um, as long as people uh, show up and vote, I think we're in really good shape. Okay. Well, in the interest of ending on time, what advice would you have to all the folks who are on the line? We still have hundreds of WA members who are listening in. So thank you for your time. Um, so if besides voting and returning their ballots, Mary and Kim, what would you what would you ask folks to do in the next couple of days before the election? I'd be asking them to make sure that they're going out and talking with their neighbors, their family, their friends, make sure all of those ballots have been turned in. I know I did the very same thing up and down my neighborhood. They're really happy to hear from me often. Um, besides making sure that you have a plan, you know, include them in your plan too to make sure those ballots are in. Okay, thank you, Kim. And Mary, as the campaign manager for Initiative 1351, and as a former teacher and as a parent of four kids here in Washington, um, what would you ask WA folks to do? You know, again, it's so important that you vote. Um, even though the polling looks good, that won't be a reality if people say, oh, well, I guess it's going to pass and don't show up. So make sure that you vote. The second thing is, um, I agree with Kim, you need to talk to people. And if there's something that you're having trouble answering, or maybe you didn't get a question answered tonight, I would encourage you to go to the Yes on 1351 website. We have uh, frequently asked questions. We have information there that can really help you uh, as you talk to people. Because we really, um, we cannot continue to stand by while we're 47th in the nation in class size. We have kids who are struggling um, at all levels, but especially in our math and science classes. And all kids deserve to learn and succeed in an uncrowded classroom. So it's, I think it's time to stop the excuses and stop worrying about all these other things and really just take a, a position that's right for kids. All right. And with that, we'll... Thank all of you for participating in tonight's uh, WA Telephone Town Hall statewide about Initiative 1351. We appreciate your involvement, and don't forget to return your ballot and vote yes on 1351. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.